This teaching is um, about the marriage supper. Okay, many don't understand what the marriage supper is all about. Um, there's going to be um, uh, two different groups of people that can get to come to the marriage supper: those that have died in Christ and those that are alive and remain. They'll, both of those will get to be at the marriage supper. But the ones that have died in Christ, uh, they're the ones that go through the tribulation. There's uh, going to be the multitude that do not hear the voice of God, and they will be the sacrificial lambs that will die during tribulation. So, so they're going to be the uh, Passover sacrifice, okay? Because they did not listen to the word of God, they did not listen to the voice of God, and they followed man instead of in God, okay? And I want to give you this uh, description right here, and it says, uh, John 10, 16 says, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Okay, that's when God and Jesus goes back together as one. Okay, so the one that's... Um, they're going to hear God's voice and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And we that are alive and remain are, are going to be the 144,000 that will be in the thousand year reign. The Passover supper, Passover supper is a separation of those who know the voice of the shepherd and those who have followed the teachings of man. Jesus tells us in his own words in red in John 12, 48, He that rejected me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Many little lambs will be killed in the tribulation. And this is in Revelation 7, 9. The multitude are the ones that followed man. And they were taught that there was going to be a rapture. And there's a lot of other Christians that have already been killed because they didn't know um, the word because they didn't know to go to Jerusalem. There's a bunch of them over there that if they went to Jerusalem, they would have been protected because the word says there's two holy mountains. One of them's Jerusalem. The other one is Zion or Eden or Brownwood, Texas. Um, now, many of the lambs will be killed in the tribulation even further because they do not know about the thousand-year reign. They don't read the Bible themselves. And the thousand-year reign is um, going to be the judgment of the world where the world is cleansed of all sin. And Jesus wants us to hear his voice. That's, um, that's being covered with his righteousness when we obey the voice of God. Noah and his family were on the, the ark for the first Passover. The death angel passed over them because they obeyed God and entered into the ark. Um, they repopulated the world. Um, the second Passover was when Moses told the Israelites to kill the lamb and place the blood over the doorpost. This was what the Lord had commanded them to do. Now Jesus tells us to leave our homes in Matthew 24, 17. Um, in, in Matthew 24, uh, 16, it says, uh, Those in Judea flee to the mountains. So the mountains are the holy mountains. Um, Eden or, or Zion, which is Texas, uh, of Eden. Of Grandma, Texas, and the other one is Jerusalem. So there's two holy mountains, and that's Daniel 9, 16, and Ezekiel um, 28, verses 13 and 14 tells you Eden was is also a holy mountain. But God just can't tell us it's Eden. He has to use the word Zion. And so that, that's his place of habitation forever, and that's in Psalms 87. The scripture in Luke 21, 36 says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that come to pass, and shall stand before the Son of Man. In Luke 22, 7, this verse is, the word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I want you to listen very carefully to this verse. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. Now the word stands forever. The word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Now, this is in the King James Version Bible. Okay, so the day of the unleavened bread is when all the little innocent lambs will be killed. So you've got to ask yourself, well, when is the day of unleavened bread? That's a day that Jesus uh, was, um, the Passover supper uh, is on the day after the Passover is killed. 
okay? And they were in a big hurry uh, in the time of uh, Moses, and they, they didn't have time for the bread to rise. That's why it's called the Day of Unleavened Bread. Okay, so Luke 22.7 is a very interesting verse because Luke was a physician, okay? And the physician, uh, in, a, in Luke uh, 5.31, it says, And Jesus asked him, said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Okay, so God's using um, the word physician. Uh, they that are whole are, need not a physician, but they that are sick. Verse 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay, so Luke was a physician. So I think that's very interesting. Luke 22, 7. Okay, 22 is a number for judgment. And, and so judgment happens in Luke 22, 7. Okay, verse 7 is, um, when it says Luke 22, 7, 7 is the number for completion. Okay, this, this scripture is very um, plain to tell us when um, Passover will be. Okay, the Passover is when, um, the day of the unleavened bread is when the uh, little innocent lambs are killed. Okay, and that little innocent lamb must be killed on the day of unleavened bread. And then the... Um, then when the uh, Passover, um, the, everybody is passed over by the death angel, okay? But we can only be passed over if we're in obedience. So, um, so uh, Luke uh, 22, 7 is a very interesting verse. Um, they are those um, lambs who will be ch suffer chastisement and judgment, the same as, as Jesus um, did when he, um, when he was crucified. He, he went to hell to preach to um, the, the people in, in hell uh, to um, give them another chance in the days of Noah. He, got, he preached to them, and he, he brought them out of hell. Okay, 1 Peter 3.19 um, are those that didn't obey during the time of um, the first Passover, which was Noah's Ark. Okay? So... Um, God tells us um, in um, Revelation 3.16 that these are the ones that don't think they need a physician, okay? They're, they're, um, they think that they're okay with God. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither hot, well, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Well, God's mouth is his protection. Verses 3.17 because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, these are those that, that think they don't need a physician. Uh, God tells them to repent and be filled with the true treasure that is God himself in their, in, in their temple, so they can see his plan that he has set out before them since the foundation of the world. Because he has... He, he has to chastise and rebuke us, okay? And that's in, um, as many as he loves, he chastises and rebukes. Revelation 3, 19. Okay, now the, the spiritual boat we get on is in Brownwood, Texas. The seven eyes of God are the Joshua's that are going to enter into the promise. Um, I had taught in the previous teaching about um, the Titanic sinking on April the 14th. Those people fed their flesh. Uh, the spiritual boat is people who feed their spirit. There's seven eyes of God on this boat. Okay, this is a map of Brownwood, Texas, right in the center. And the seven eyes of God are the seven churches that obeyed God in 2012 when God gave a word to a lady to tell the, the church to keep their doors open for seven nights and seven days straight and, and keep their lights on for seven nights and seven days straight. And that's in... Uh, 2 Chronicles 29, verses 5 through 9. So if we follow man and we um, we think there's going to be a rapture, we will go to the marriage supper if we love God, but it will be um, not the way we want it to go because there's going to be the sacrifice, and the sacrifice little lambs that don't listen to God are going to be the ones that are killed by the thief. And the thief is coming. So I hope that this um, is a good scriptures um, for you to go back and look at. Luke 22, 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread. Okay, that's the day that um, um, when the Passover must be killed. That's, that's April the 14th. 
So April the 14th, we need to keep awake and we need to uh, be alert because uh, Jesus is coming and um, we need to uh, obey Him. And many will um, uh, hear the voice of God in, in this, I pray, because uh, this is what the Lord has been trying to do is get everybody to get on the spiritual boat and not the Titanic that um, everyone said that wasn't sinkable and God sank it on the very first trip out. So we want to make sure that we get on the right spiritual boat. And I hope that this teaching has been a blessing to you. And this is the boat. <coughs> and you, you people ask, <coughs> thank you.